What's up guys, this is Tommy Cleves from Austin Underground and I am here at ACL with Ryan and Amos of the Night Owls. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Awesome, so you just came off the Austin Venture stage a couple hours ago. You played your first time at ACL. I heard you guys got rained out last time, so that's a bit of a bummer. How did it feel to finally play your ACL show? Uh, uh, it feels like a long time coming, you know. It, it was a little bittersweet last year, but um, you make the best of it and you know, it's. It's our hometown, hometown fans, hometown crowd, hometown families, so it always feels good playing play music in front of them, so, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you guys just released your second studio album, The Fame Sessions, um, and you guys recorded it, pretty self-explanatory, at the iconic Fame Studios in Alabama. Aretha Franklin's recorded there, and I read that you actually had uh, original musicians from the original Fame Studio band. Um, that's pretty incredible. Tell me about what that atmosphere was like creating music and how it impacted the music that ended up on the album. Sure. So with Fame, we 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 wanted to yeah. So shameless plug. <laughs> so uh, we you know for us it was more of a concept album. We wanted to you know kind of make a journey. You know have an adventure. Go to a studio that um, it's really the last working studio in the country that you know, produced that style of music. Stax is gone, Motown is gone. Um, and, and it was actually funny because we were looking for, you know, where to go. And it was about that time that the Muscle Shoals documentary came out. And so, you know, I had thought that, you know, because of the overlap between Stax and Memphis and Muscle Shoals that I didn't realize the, how deep the history really was there. So it really kind of clarified where we were going, what we were doing, what we wanted to do. And anyway, the producer that we worked with we just called the studio and Spooner Oldham and David Hood are still session players that you know come in and, and work and the studio is, is really remarkably unchanged the room it looks exactly the same the lighting is the same it's the original microphones it's the original Wurlitzer the B3 that they cut all those tunes on is sitting there it's very very surreal just throughout I mean it's been the, the tech some of the tech has been modernized for you know to go to digital but everything else is pretty much identical. So for us, it was just kind of like being kids in a candy store, more or less, just, you know, eating it up the whole time. Just surreal, something I'll never forget. So uh, you mentioned that a lot of the studios of old, like fame, are kind of gone now. Uh, and I feel like the music culture now, the music uh, genres now, we're very dominated by pop and electronic. So I want to know where you guys, a funky throwback, bluesy sound, find your inspiration today. In, his, in like artists or like yeah, current yeah, artists? Is it looking yeah. back, is it looking? Back oh, it's now, it, it's it's both really. You know, like you said, there's there, there's definitely a resurgence of 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 soul and of Motown and of this of live bands using real instruments. You know, as music is getting more digital, I think one of the responses is naturally is is to kind of do the throwback thing. That's and for I mean for us, it's not necessarily what we're trying to do, but. It, it, it's kind of um, it's music that we all grew up on, and so. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Where do you guys find your inspiration? We find inspiration both looking at the at you know what came before us, the going going to fame, go you know listening to um, Al Green and listening to that, but also listening to you know there there are there's a band called Combrio here t that's from L. A. They're a soul band doing they're our age. We listen to them. There's a band out from Nashville that's a soul band. We, we're, we're always listening to each other and what's what they're doing in LA, what they're doing in Nashville, what, what's the, what they're doing in, in New York, and you know, uh, it, trying to you know gather as much information as possible. There's a, there's a lot of great music that, that's still happening. Yeah. So, absolutely, that's yeah. good to hear. Uh, now you mentioned that this is your hometown. You guys are from Austin. And I'm sure you've heard that a lot of local venues downtown are closing. Red 7 and Holy Mountain have closed, and Austin Music Hall is on its way. Uh, so as musicians with a very close relationship with the city, you actually have the official theme song of Austin as one of your songs. That's pretty freaking cool. Uh, what's your take on that? On, on all the clubs? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it, it, it's tough. You know, it, we, tr we all try to support each other as much as possible. And it, there, it, um, it's a good question. <laughs> I think it's. I think we're in kind of a, a slow downhill slide. Um, I'm a Ryan grew up in Austin. I'm a transplant. I've been here almost eight years, 
And I mean, I came here for the music. I came here because I wanted this culture. I wanted to assimilate in. Um, and it's, it's changed rapidly even since I've been here. Everybody talks about 80s and 90s and now, you know, how that was like the golden age. Um, but I, I think that I think that we're running up against, you know, corporations, um, you know, not really understanding what makes Austin Austin. You know, and there's a big disconnect between that. And I think we're, we're straddling the line of, you know, losing that identity. I don't think we'll lose it completely, but it's definitely just making it harder for everybody to live and survive and work. And, and you know, if, if you choose a lifestyle as a creative, it's tough to make a living anyway. You know, it's you know, really only the people that work really hard and get lucky and are talented make it out or, you know, have a, a viable lifestyle. Um, everybody else is doing, you know, the day job and the night job and trying to make it work. And as that gets tougher, you know, it's, it's going to force people to look elsewhere. Um, so, I, you know, I know even just with the simple thing of a sound ordinance, how that's changed downtown dramatically. When I moved eight years ago, the warehouse district was the place to be. That's where everybody went. That's where all the live bands were. I mean, you could, you could head down and there would be... You would hear the band within like a you know 10 block radius and come running over because you was like that sounds great and now it's just it's you know they because of the restrictions that have been placed you don't have that so the clubs suffer the bands suffer they have to try to find other places there are clubs i think like one to one that really tries to be a musician club and fight the good fight but it's it's a pretty selfless thing you know it's, it's still a business at the end of the day so it's tough yeah, it's a touchy subject for me. You know, I, I'm born and raised, I've lived here my whole life, and I've witnessed the, the, the music scene change dramatically, especially over the last five, ten years. Uh, you know, and, and that's, that comes with, any, it comes with any city that grows as quickly as Austin. You know, what, what, what can you do? When you, people see a good thing like Austin, they want to they want to move here and that's obviously that's going to change things now so i think it's up to the artists i think it's up to the, the venues i think it's up to the music lovers to all you know raise a flag and just raise our voices and 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 help shape and help direct austin in in the right place i think if we do that then i think that we can you know i think we can maintain the thing that the, you know the the heart of Austin, the soul of Austin, being music and live music. So I think the two can coexist. Absolutely, I do. I, do. I just it's nobody wants to compromise right now. I yeah, do, I think there's middle ground. We try to stay optimistic about it. Yeah, you know, and, and, and being a local band here at ACL, that's you know, it's it's a nice gesture, mm -hmm. you know, because it's you know, it's it's easy to get run over by all these national touring bands, and you know, there's. There's what five, ten local Austin bands represented here, you know, and maybe that's good, maybe it's not, you know. Uh, but yeah, we're we're trying to stay optimistic here. <laughs> as long as you raise your voices within the sound ordinance, I think we'll be good. Don't get too loud, because then you can get some people mad. Yeah. Okay. So I have uh, one last question for you guys, and it's what are the night owls looking forward to in the future? Um. You know, uh, for for me personally, I, I I'm really looking forward to m m making s obviously making some more great records and really taking this band the the, per the people that we have in the band now are are amazing. They're, they're great performers, great singers, great players, and I you know I really we want to we want to continue to um, to to push what we're doing to you know, more dancing and better songs and better performances and and, and better just overall. Um, overall, just continue to move forward with what we're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I elevate everything. Yeah, we're, you know, we're constant tinkerers with with our with our craft, which is necessary, I think. But it's it, it can, it's, has negative things as well. But we're always looking for things to do better and things to to change and to to, to tweak and to get you know refine. to to refine. So. Um, you know, we we have we, like we like like I think Amos said we're thinking about going to Royal Studios in Memphis to to cut another record, but we also um, you know we have a lot of big plans for kind of pushing the you know what we're doing you know outside of this throwback soul a little bit. So we'll see. You know, we've got a lot of big plans. So well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you guys so much, Ryan and Amos of the Night Owls. Thanks for watching.